If you were in Western Washington in the late 1990s, the name Tika Lewis is likely very familiar to you. Tika was just two years old when she seemingly vanished from a Tacoma bowling alley. This unsolved case just marked 25 years. My colleague Steve Solis from the newsroom is digging into Tika's story for our cold case series, Unsolved Northwest. Thank you for, for doing that and for, for coming on New Day. You and I both have young kids, so this yeah. kind of hits a bit different it, right there in the gut. Why did you choose Tika's story to do for Unsolved? You know, it's funny you ask that because we've had that conversation in the newsroom as we were trying to do the story mm -hmm. uh, because we've done the story every year. Tika yeah. Lewis, there's this press conference every year marking the, the year that it happens. Uh, her mom goes out into the public and tries to get the word out. So she gets a lot of airtime. Um, we thought, in, instead of just giving it the minute or minute yeah. and a half that it normally gets on TV, let's really dive deep to find out what happened, uh, other details we may not get in that minute, minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I really wanted uh, our viewers to, to feel a mother's pain. Yeah. Because oftentimes, we, in news people, we get facts, yeah. and that's all we get. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted myself and our viewers to connect with what this woman's been going through for a quarter mm -hmm. of a century. Yeah, and like you said, you know, more than just that minute, more depth, and that is what makes me so proud to work at King 5, is, is the way we do go into depth in, in things, and the journalists like you that we have. But for those who aren't familiar with the case, what do we know about Tika's disappearance? So we know in January 1999, mom went bowling with the kids, mm -hmm. um, and in a moment, Tika disappeared. Mm -hmm. uh, they shut down the bowling alley. They were questioning people as they left. The problem is, this is 1999, so there aren't cameras everywhere. Oh, okay. Um, there aren't a, a ton of, of like, you know, now there, everybody's got a ring camera, yeah. something hanging. Now, that, that wasn't the case then. So now, when I talk to detectives, the, there's no cameras, there's no pictures, there's no physical evidence, which is really difficult at this point, 25 years later. Yeah. And so right now they're just hoping to depend on somebody who remembers something. But then again, 25 years later, memories change. Some people, some people die. Yeah. And so it's become harder and harder to get this case solved. That is so hard. So detectives recently released some age progression photo of, of Tika and what she would look like 27 years old now. And I think we have that here. Um, her family has never given up hope, though, that she may still be alive somewhere. Her mom really believes that, that Tika is alive somewhere. And I understand why. I mean, there's no physical evidence. Usually, yeah. after all this time, something comes up somewhere that hasn't right. happened yet. Uh, but I think she really believes that someone took her and raised her as their own, which she hopes is the case. But right. she also hopes that at some point, wherever Tika is, she asks questions so she could be reunited with her mom. And is that one of the reasons you think she continues to keep herself so visual and holding this vigil every year so that hopefully maybe Tika will see that? I think that's part of it. I think that's definitely the case. She thinks that Tika's out there somewhere, mm -hmm. but I also think because unfortunately there's so many cases like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in news, every story that I read day in, day out, it sounds just like the next one. Yeah. And so it's important to really highlight uh, specifically this one case, and that's what she does year in, year out. Mm -hmm. And that's why we went a little bit deeper this year, so it didn't get mixed in with the other stories we've done in the past. So mm -hmm. it really stands out and people can really understand this case uh, the way it needs to be understood. And you shot this story over three days. You spent some time on it interviewing Tika's family, Tacoma PD. Are investigators still actively working on this case? They are. I, the detective I spoke with is still doing interviews with people. She's still trying to chase people down. The hard part that she's, uh, the wall that she keeps hitting is people keep ghosting her. Because really? maybe they have information, maybe they're afraid to talk, or maybe they don't want to rat someone out, or maybe they're afraid they might implicate themselves. There are a number of reasons why. Uh, but that's been the hardest part for her is the people who are still alive, mm -hmm. who still have some facts uh, in their heads, they just they don't want to talk for some reason. They just don't want to get involved. That's a real problem overall with society, I think, this yeah. day and age. What, what is there a common thread I think you had mentioned about several people contacting Tika's mother yeah. saying, I think I might be Tika. What is that? So that really shocked me because of all the stories we've done over, about Tika over the years, we've never heard that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tacoma police tell me the problem they have is people reach out to the family to say, hey, I think I might be Tika. 
And you might be wondering, well, why would someone do that? Right. Well, somebody, some of these people may have had situations where they grew up and didn't have a whole lot of background on their childhood. Okay. Maybe they were raised by grandma and grandpa and don't know anything about their mom, so maybe they're questioning, maybe this is my mom. Okay. Um, or, or whatever reason. Maybe somebody just is hoping that th there's a different life for them out there. Either way, they're contacting mom, mm -hmm. which uh, Tacoma Police is saying, please don't do That's that. That's got to be incredibly painful. It's very traumatizing for them. At least with Tacoma Police, they can talk to those people, right. do DNA testing, and find out for sure whether or not they are Tika. But at this point, every person who's come forward, it's been an unsuccessful match. Oh, man. It is really profound when you think about that. The, 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 uh, there's so many implications and, and layers to that right there. Mm -hmm. What makes this piece unlike any other unsolved that you've aired so far? Well, one, we've, we've spent a lot of time researching the story mm -hmm. before we even shot the story. Uh, and then in the conversations that we had, uh, because we spent so much time with them, both Tika's mom, Tacoma police, everybody involved felt really comfortable with us. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to share more uh, details that we've never heard before. So mm -hmm. one, we're going to hear a lot of new details. One, it was, I mean, two, it was beautifully shot. Uh, Joseph Huerta was the photographer who worked mm, on this. Very talented. Beautiful. I mean, it just it looks amazing. So on top of great content, it just looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to see it air. We're also going to have two versions. It's pretty long. Oh, so okay. we're going to have a, a version you'll see on King 5, but you'll also have a King 5 Plus or King5.com version that's going to be much longer, much more content. That is going to be great. Okay, yeah. I'm so glad that we, we can do this both on the King 5 and on King 5 Plus. When does it, when can we start seeing it? When is it going to air initially? It'll air Thursday at 6.30 on King 5, and then again at 11 o'clock that night, and then we'll have it on Kong um, at 9 and 10 that night. But uh, I'm not sure when the digital version will be uh, online, but it shouldn't be too far, right. far after that. I'm really, I'm really glad that you chose to cover this. I'm so, I cannot wait to see you and Joseph's work on this. It's just incredible that... We're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, to learn more about unsolved cases and to get updates on past stories, subscribe to recent updates from the unsolved team. All you have to do is text the word unsolved to 206-448-4545 to sign up.